Picture this, a bright, sunny summer day in Seattle, the kind of day we all live for. The staccato sound of keyboards, the murmur of lingering coworkers winding down a long afternoon, and me longing for the smell of barbecue on my toilet deck. Picture this, a deeply troubled young man, unable to get the help he needs and wants, angry about US foreign policy, money in arms in Israel, overwhelmed by weakness, infatuated with power, suddenly zealous, a misguided jihadist wannabe. An internet search, Jewish, Seattle, then fully armed, a drive over the mountain pass to a downtown Seattle office he's never heard of before. And the unexpected, a locked security door. Picture this, a lovely 14-year-old girl meeting her aunt after art class. Her joyfulness turned to terror as a man holds a gun to her head and forces her to buzz them into her aunt's office building. Afraid but observant, she senses his distraction and flees to the ladies' room, aware she isn't safe. Picture this, an angry man shouting demands outside the hallway of my office, just making a point, just seeking media attention, brandishing a gun, waving it around, excitement in his eyes. My side hurts. It's as if I've been punched. He points the black hole at my face. I drop to the floor, cover my head, and wait for death. Picture this, alone in the ladies' room, terrified when the shots begin. The girl calls 911, standing on a toilet, crying and crying, hearing the gunfire and screams. Picture this, ringing in my ears, cries and screams. He's back again, shooting us again, then gone again. A sudden thought, where's my niece? Focused on finding her, I rise. My side hurts. It's bleeding. Was I grazed? No matter, I make my way on tiptoe, running to the stairs. There on the landing, lying in a pool of blood, her eyes open but lifeless, is my coworker, Pam. I step over her body and pray he doesn't follow me, find me, shoot me, kill me. Picture this, at the door, a ghost town, busy rush hour, Third Avenue, gone deathly quiet. I raise one arm and I hold my bleeding side and I step out to a SWAT team firing line. They yell, run, get out of the line of fire. And so I run and run and run to safety. And all I can talk about is finding my niece until someone realizes I've been shot. Picture this, in the paramedic van, my blouse and skirt being cut off, a mask is lowered to my face. I'm gone. Picture this. Awakening from coma, a week lost. Intubated, mute, signing K for my niece. A Girl Scout badge, a latent skill, suddenly my communication lifeline. Relief and gratitude that she's OK, but pain and fear, fear in everyone's eyes but brave smiles and hands holding mine. Picture this, large and small intestines, my uterus shredded by one hollow point bullet. Infection and fever that won't go away. Pain and more pain. A blood clot, a collapsed lung. Six weeks just to sew me back together. Then three years, 20 surgeries in all. Months and months of PTSD therapy. I'm mended, 
but I'll never be fully restored. Picture this, a year and a half to the court trial, six weeks of mind-numbing testimony. Was he insane or not? A hung jury, a mistrial. Another year and a half to the retrial. More evidence this time, jailhouse phone tapes, bragging to his parents, I got those Jews. Finally, a verdict, guilty. Life plus 120 years, no possibility of parole. Picture this, wondering to myself, now what? I notice more and more shootings. Virginia Tech, Fort Hood, Tucson, Aurora, Cafe Racer, Sandy Hook. Every year, thousands and thousands killed and maimed with guns. Each one a body slam I can't ignore. I'm called to speak up, to speak for those who can't, for those who won't, for those who don't know what to do, what to say. Now, imagine this, a country where we talk about this, where we lift the rug and look underneath and shine a spotlight on what we've become, a country where we don't feel safe, where we're not safe. Imagine no more shame, no more fear of talking about it, no more dirty, deadly little secret. Imagine a country where we talk about this, about guns and what they mean to us, what they don't mean to us, about why we're so very afraid of each other. We can talk about this. We need to talk about this. Demand that we talk about this. Speeches, yes. Debates, of course. But more important, conversations. Please talk about this. Imagine that. Imagine. I'm Cheryl Stumbo, and I'm a survivor. Thank you. <laughs>